What's up, BF fam? This is Big Tone coming at you with another video from Beats and Feast. We're going to do something today that I kind of stumbled upon, well, at least the sauce anyway. We're going to do sweet and sour pork chops. Um, I kind of stumbled upon this looking for a sweet and sour chicken stir fry recipe because um, I don't like... I don't like sweet and sour sauce with ketchup base, so I was looking for something a little different, but I stumbled upon this. I ended up making my sweet and sour chicken stir fry, but I also discovered that this sauce can be used as kind of a universal sauce. So today we're going to be doing sweet and sour pork chops with this sauce, okay? But before we get down, you know how we do. So I want you to go like, comment, and subscribe, and share the video if you really like it. Um, and also comment on anything else you'd like to see me cook. I'm more than happy to try to accommodate. But we're going to get started with this video. All right, guys. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to season up the pork chops. And we're going to fry them off here. So I'm going to kind of give you my supporting cast right away. Um, I'm going to use, of course, my Himalayan sea salt, pink Himalayan sea salt, my black pepper, my garlic powder, and my adobo seasoning, and my lies, okay? So those are gonna be my seasoning spices that I'm gonna be using on the pork chop. So of course, I always usually start with salt. Depends on the protein, but I'm gonna add salt to it. All right, and we're gonna use some black pepper, of course, you guys know I'm heavy-handed with the black pepper. And I found these pork chops at the store actually uh, just a day or so ago. And these are actually really nice center cut. I only use center cut pork chops with the bone in. I don't use boneless. I know people like them. They're very easy, convenient for maybe sandwiches or something. But that bone has so much flavor, I keep it in. If I want to cut it out later, that's my prerogative. All right. Got my uh, garlic, pow or garlic powder on there. And I'm going to use my Lowry's now, Lowry's. I'm not going to use a lot of Lowry's, only because I've already put salt on it. But that Lowry's, you know, brings that Lowry's flavoring. And then we're going to use my adobo, which is really just a kicked up version of Lowry's. It's got a few other spices in there, so I'm going to use a little bit of that, cover it over. All right, we're just going to simply flip them over and do the other side. I'm going to go ahead and put that on camera for you here. I usually don't bore you with that, but we're going to um, go ahead and do that today. Let me wipe my hands off a little bit. Again, salt. All right, and our black pepper. Again, my heavy handness. All right, and then our garlic powder here. Now, if you choose to use garlic salt, you can go ahead and do so. Just remember, that's another additive of salt you're putting on it. So, watch your blood pressure. Our Lowry's. And, and feel free, don't, just because I use bone-in, if you like boneless pork chops, then go ahead. Do what you want to do. That's what makes cooking fun. And then my adobo. All right. And then we're just going to basically dust these with flour, okay? We're going to get a nice flour coating on this. Usually I use like a Ziploc bag, and I just go ahead and put the... Um, the uh, flour in the Ziploc bag and I shake it up really well. But this we're just going to use a dusting of flour here. Fold this back up. And I'm just going to rub it in here really good. Get it all coated. And then we're going to flip them over. Usually I can use what's the remaining flour that's left there and just kind of dab it in there. As you see. Alright, let's flip these over. And this is the old school method, so 
you know, if you guys have a different method of flowering, feel free. All we're doing, trying to do is get it coated with flour here. All right, and then uh, I'll be right back and we'll have these in the frying pan. We're gonna sear these off, okay? Because this whole dish is gonna go in the oven. But we're gonna sear this off and get some bright, nice brownness to them. And we'll be right back in just a moment. All right, guys, as you can see, I got my pork chop searing off, just a nice golden brown. Now you wanna cook these till they're about maybe halfway done, maybe three quarters of the way done. But um, I'm gonna get a nice little brown on the other side of them. And then we're gonna take that off and then I'll show you my sauce here. Um, but it'll be a few minutes and I'll show you my sauce and, and uh, then we'll combine the two and we'll get a finished product for you. But let's let this sear for a minute and we'll be right back. All right, BFM, so we're back. We're gonna get started on our sauce, okay? So the sauce is very, very simple. Um, and what, what I have on my recipe is I double it because I usually like to cover my pork chops so it can marinate while it's cooking. So the sauce consists of this. Um, it has one cup of sugar. It has one cup of distilled or just white vinegar, table or household vinegar. Um, it also has, um, it's going to be about a quarter of a cup to half a cup of soy sauce. That'll all be in the description. And then I use these little cans of pineapple juice. It equals out to about about 14 to 16 ounces of uh, pineapple juice. And then I use, um, it's going to be about eh, somewhere between a fourth and a half a cup of water. But I hold off on my water and I thicken it with cornstarch. So the cornstarch will be last and I put that in with the water and I'll show you how I do that. But in any case, we're going to start off with the sugar. My pot's getting hot here. So that's one cup of sugar. And then I'm going to pour in my pineapple juice. That's one can there. And here comes the second can. Sometimes I don't always use that. It just depends on if I want it real sweet. Um, and then at that point, we're going to put in our soy sauce which really is about it's going to be about two, two tablespoons of soy sauce again i don't measure exactly it calls for about two teaspoons but i put in about four or about two tablespoons okay and then i'm going to add my my white vinegar just regular household distilled vinegar here you can also use rice wine vinegar but i like the regular vinegar it tastes a little bit more this is a half a cup. Okay, and as you can see, I use the same pot that I use for my pork chops here. Um, I like to get that little grit off of it. So this is more or less a, a one pot dish in my household because I'm just gonna make the sauce, thicken it up, and then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add the pork chops right back to it. But we're gonna whisk this around, get it mixed up here, good. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring this to a boil, simmer. And then once it comes to the simmer, then I'm gonna start thickening it with my, um, my cornstarch and water, okay? And I'll show you how I make that mixture. But uh, we'll be back in just a second, okay? All right, guys, so we're back. As you can see, I got this coming to a slight simmer here. Sauce is getting nice and saucy. But now we're gonna come to the point where we gotta thicken it. So I'm gonna use about two tablespoons this is one heaping heaping tablespoon of cornstarch into about a half a cup of water okay make sure your water is cold or lukewarm we're going to mix it up it's going to become the consistency you'll see it dissolve and it'll be just like water you won't be able to tell just be like a chalky water all right and then we're just going to simply add that if you add that to the mixture without going through the process of doing it in a separate container, it will become clumpy. And when you add that to a hot liquid, it's gonna become clumpy. So we're just gonna simply add that while stirring and whisking. See if we can't get it a little thicker here. You should start to see it thicken up. And then if it doesn't, we'll just add a little bit more. That's how you do it. But let's see if this can thicken up a little bit here. 
I'm gonna turn it up a tad bit to about 300 here. Let it continue to boil. Ah, yeah, I can see it starting to thicken up now. And I just continuously stir this um, because if you don't, it sometimes can get a little lumpy. But for the most part, it'll be smooth. And as you can see, it's starting to thicken up just a little bit here. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add just a little bit more cornstarch to water here, okay? So I'm going to pour just about a, about a fourth of a tea, fourth of a cup of water in here. And I'm going to add probably about another teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. Well, hold on. Let's see if it thickens up nicely. It's starting to boil now. So it's thickening up pretty good. I may not have to add that. Yeah, and that's usually the case. It has to come to a nice boil, and you'll see it just start to thicken up even more. So just let it boil for a second, and it'll start to thicken up. And I'm going to use my little uh, wooden spoon here to see exactly how thick it is. Let me give it a little taste test. Ah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, it's coming together. All right, so I'm going to turn this down to about a low set setting here. And at this point, we're just simply going to add back the uh, pork chops, okay? I'm going to put this over to the side a little bit. And I'm going to add one pork chop at a time back to this mixture here. All right. So we got all the pork chops in there. They're almost submerged. Here, shake it up just a little bit here. They're almost submerged. Matter of fact, let me see if I can push this one down in here a little bit. That one, there we go. Starting to get a little bit on the tops of them. So at this point, we got everything in the dish. We're gonna pop this in a 350 oven, usually for about 45 to minutes to an hour. All right, but I will see you when this comes out of the oven. I'll have a little side dish here for you as well. Uh, we'll be right back. Okay, guys, as you can see, we're here at the oven. So we're just going to simply put this on. I preheated the oven at 350. We're going to pop this in. I covered my, uh, my Copper Shift Pro pot there. By the way, that's a plug. So if they're on, if they're listening, I need some more equipment. But anyway, put it on 350 oven. Like I said, it's going to be about 45 minutes. Sometimes I leave it in for an hour. Depends on how what the tender, tenderness of the pork chops are. But I'll see you when they come out. All right. All right, BFM. So here we go with the finished product. We got our sweet and sour pork chops over a little bit of rice and some Brussels sprouts. Another perfection on the plate. Hey, guys, I have to remind you, if you like this video, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and share the video. That's how we, uh, that's how we grow. But anyway, this is Big Tone. Until next time, signing off. Peace.